and welcome back to Brent's Victory Garden, where today I'm talking about seeds, where to get them, why you would plant them, and how to care for them, and all that kind of good stuff. So first off, you may be wondering, well, people really you know, they talk about seeds, but I don't have time. I find seeds are not all that hard to plant and, uh, and take care of. They take quite a little bit of attention, but it's, it's something that the modern person can actually handle. Uh, the other nice thing about them is they're darn cheap. I mean, this packet of onions, onion seeds, is a buck seventy-five for a minimum of three hundred seeds. Holy guacamole! Uh, and this packet of tomatoes is two bucks for a minimum of twenty-five seeds, and that looks actually more like fifty in there. So, yeah, really, really cheap. A couple of cents per plant. Uh, and so, if you care for them, you're actually going to get a lot of bounty out of them. Uh, as to where to get them, um, I actually prefer to go online and, uh, uh, and go there. So just search for you know, online seed catalog, seed catalog, or heirloom seed catalog, and you'll, you'll find them. I'm not going to recommend them because if you can do your research, you can, you can find them. You know. you know your needs more than I do. Now, the thing about, as I mentioned, heirlooms. I prefer to plant heirloom seeds. These are varieties that have been around for usually a century or more. Um, and the seeds um, are not owned by a corporation, and they're not gene genetically modified. Now, I'm not going to get into an argument here or talk about genetically modified. I'm, I'm not coming down one side or the other on that. The advantage of these is, you know, whether you think genetically modified seeds are safe or not, these aren't genetically modified, so they're safe. And they, since they've been around for a long time, that's proven that they are relatively uh, drought resistant and pest resistant, and relatively easy to grow, and things like that. And they've been tested in uh, both the market and in the mouth, so to speak, as being something worth planting. So that's definitely an advantage there. So uh, when you order your seeds, you will notice that there's a wide variety of, of times when they come in. And this gets into the three things I think you really have to pay attention to, um, or they're, they're worth paying attention to when you're planting seeds. Timing, watering, and attention. TWA. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, very few of you will know what TWA and oh well. So point being that uh, uh, timing. So your seeds will come in, but unfortunately, some will need to be planted early, and some people, some will need to be planted in the summer, and some will need to be started indoors way early in the winter. So what I've done this year actually is I ordered about I think ten different packets of seeds, and when they came in, I flipped them over and said, okay, this one needs to be planted in mid February, and this one in mid April, and I sort of put them into piles. And unfortunately, some of them will say things like, they should be planted indoors six to eight weeks before the last frost. So you have to go online and say, okay, last frost in Denver or whatever for this year. And you find that out, and then you have to calculate it out. So I put them all in piles. It doesn't take long, a few minutes. Uh, and then I actually grabbed some envelopes. I happen to have these envelopes that were just the right size. And I label them. This one says, plant in mid-March. And then I have one here for mid-April and so forth and so on. And uh, so I stuck the seeds in, those, in these envelopes and stuck them in a drawer. And then I put a reminder on my computer, which pops up about once a month, actually exactly once a month. And a little uh, alert pops up with, it with a, a sound and says, hey, check your seeds. So when that pops up, I go over, check the drawer, pull out the appropriate envelope for that month, and off I go. And it's working fine so far this year, so we'll see. So, you know, once you have your seeds, you've got to find some system for figuring out when to plant them and actually planting them at the right time. And when it comes to watering, um, this is actually something that surprised me when I found it out. Apparently, more people, or people kill more plants through overwatering than underwatering. Now, seeds want soil that's sort of moist, not bone dry, but not sopping wet either. So I actually prefer to let my soil get a little drier than I would think it would need to be to get that wonderful, you know, moist, dark soil that everyone, you know, seems to you know, lust after. Um, so I let it get a little drier than, than, than normal, and it seems to work for me. Um, which actually comes into attention. How often do you actually need to, to check these things out? Look at them every day or two. Um, you know, you don't need to be super vigilant about your seeds. I think a lot of people paint seedlings as these incredibly delicate creatures, where if you don't have the exact right balance of soil and temperature in the air and humidity and all that kind of stuff, they'll just die. 
Now, granted, there are some cases where you know one particular thing balances things uh, incorrectly, but I found seedlings are pretty, you know, they, they grow pretty well. They're, they're fairly vigorous. Um, you know, as long as your house isn't freezing cold or incredibly hot, um, as long as it isn't incredibly arid in your house, and as long as you know you have a reasonable kind of, of living arrangement. Uh, and by arid, I mean you know you can live out in the desert and you can grow seeds indoors. Um, so for the vast majority of us, I think seedlings can be grown indoors without a problem, as long as you check on them every so often. Uh, obviously, wait a week between watering, that's probably too much. They'll be bone dry for a couple of days by that point. And this actually gets to an, an important thing that, um, uh, uh, that relates to growing things indoors. Outside, when you have these big expanses of soil that all soak in water, there's basically reserves of water. So if one plant sucks up all the water around it, more water can, can come in. If it's planted indoors in a pot, there's only the, the water in that soil that it can draw off of. And that's why things indoors tend to need to be watered more often because there's just nowhere else for it to pull water from. So you don't want to check your seedlings. You do want to check them. Like I said, every day or two is, is probably the best. Um, uh, you, if, you're, if you're away for a couple of days, it's not going to kill them. But you know, check on them fairly frequently. And we're talking two minutes tops to go over there. Heck, you go over there, you look, and it's, and it's fine. You're done. You go away. If you go and you see they're pretty dry, you go and you grab some water and you water them. Boom, done. And you'll, you know, if you've never done this before, it'll be pretty easy, I think, to get a feel for when things are too wet or too dry or things like that. So, you know, give it a try, and I, I don't think you will just immediately kill them. And even if you do, you wasted what? 25 cents? A buck? Horrors. So, those are my tips. I hope that you found that useful, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.